I, I'm not sure he's going to be a dominating NBA player. I don't give a damn about how this kid in Europe looks. He doesn't pop athletically. It's slower than rush hour traffic. He doesn't, he doesn't look special to me. Luka Doncic was not only the most accomplished teenage player to ever come from Europe, he was the most accomplished teenager in basketball history. So how was he not selected first overall in the 2018 NBA draft? And why did four teams pass on Luka? We'll dive deep into Luka's basketball upbringing and his super successful career in Europe, mock some of the haters who doubted Doncic, and try to get into the minds of four GMs who didn't draft him. 16 minutes. That's how long an eight-year-old Luka played in his first ever basketball game, before his coach pulled him out simply because he saw that Luka was too good for these kids. He immediately put Doncic on a team with 12-year-olds, and it didn't take him long to be the best player on that team. At the age of 13, Luka moved to Spain to Real Madrid's youth academy. Academy, where he became MVP in every major tournament. In 2015, at the age of 16, he made his debut for the senior team and became the youngest player in club history. But Luka wasn't just some talented kid with his name on the roster and no playing time. In 2016, Doncic became a regular part of the rotation, and in 2017, he was one of the most important players on the team. He was named EuroLeague Rising Star by a unanimous vote and claimed the Spanish League's Best Young Player Award. The best part? Luka was just getting started. During the summer, he helped the Slovenian team go undefeated at the European Championship and win the gold medal with 14 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists in 29 minutes per game. He was the second best player on the Slovenian team, behind Goran Dragic, who was the tournament MVP, while Luka made the all-tournament team. When he returned to Madrid, Luka became the starting point guard. It was his time to show what he can do as the alpha dog of the team. Doncic may have been a baby-faced 18-year-old, but he played with the poise of a 35 five-year-old veteran. Never before have we seen a player this young manipulate, bait, and make defenders look silly as much as Luka did. So it didn't take long for anyone to see what kind of player Luka Doncic is. And you didn't have to be some kind of advanced scout to see that. The biggest problem of talented young players, apart from physical immaturity, is that they usually have no idea what their strengths and weaknesses are in pro basketball. Luka didn't have any of those problems. His greatest strength was a deep understanding of basketball geometry and the ability to dominate possessions by adjusting to the defense. He thrived in the pick and roll as the primary ball handler, which is a skill that is not easily acquired. It requires intelligence, timing, body strength, and a solid shot. Doncic had it all. If the passing lanes to his teammates were closed, he had the ability to finish the possession himself. If the defense closes the driving lanes, Luka would find his teammates with surgical precision. The young Slovenian mastered his footwork and became a great scorer from mid-range, and due to his size and ball handling, he could exploit one-on-one -on -one matchups. It's an unfathomable mystery how at such a young age, he could manipulate the defense, be a triple threat, and be cool in the clutch. Most players his age would step aside in favor of more experienced players, but whenever the game was on the line, the ball was in Luka's hands. And unlike most primary ball handlers, Doncic is a big dude. Although he's not exactly speedy, due to his big body and enormous wingspan on a 6'7 frame, he has an exceptional ability to absorb absorb contact. Thanks to his size, he can play with his back to the basket, easily keep the defenders on his hip, and bounce them around as he pleases. In 2018, Doncic won the EuroLeague MVP award, being its youngest winner. He averaged 16 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game, over 33 EuroLeague games. After he led Real Madrid to the victory and EuroLeague title, Luka was subsequently named Final Four MVP and was voted to the EuroLeague All-Decade team. He then did the same thing in the Spanish League, winning his third national championship with Real Madrid and claiming the league MVP. What's it feel like right now to be named the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague MVP? Yeah, it's amazing, you know, it's uh, like, like a dream country. There have been other players who were equally accomplished when they came to the NBA. Players like Manu Ginobili, Tony Kukoc, and Drajan Petrovic all came to the NBA as EuroLeague champions and MVPs. But they all did it in their mid-20s. Nobody did it as a teenager. And if we compare Luka to the American prospects, there have been players who were equally or more talented than Luka as teenagers. LeBron, Kareem, KD, and Carmelo were all stars of their high school and college teams. Teams, but neither of those guys had more individual and team accolades than Luka at the same level of competition. Winning a high school championship or an NCAA title is not an easy thing to do, but these are still amateur competitions, while top NCAA teams like Duke and Kentucky often have 
multiple future NBA players on their rosters. They're still boys who are going to class and taking exams. Luca has been the MVP of the EuroLeague and the Spanish ACB League, which are the best professional leagues in the world outside of the NBA. So how is it possible that talent so great as Luca, who won every possible trophy in Europe, was not selected first overall? Well, there are multiple reasons for that. The first was that the NBA general managers were a bit biased towards the EuroLeague, and they weren't sure that Luca's success would translate to the NBA. The truth was that many high draft picks from Europe have become busts when they come to America. Andrea Bargnani, who was the first overall pick in the 2006 draft, never delivered on his promise. He was soft and a defensive black hole. The same could be said about Enos Cantor, who was the third pick in 2011, Mario Hizonia, who was the biggest bust of the 2015 draft, or Dragan Bender, who was the fourth pick in 2016, but has never had a string of two good games and was soon out of the league. We also can't forget about the infamous Darko Milicic, a bust who was drafted second overall in front of three Hall of famers. But maybe the biggest obstacle to Luca being the first pick was Ricky Rubio. Ricky was also a teenage star in the Spanish League, and had won trophies in the Euro League and with the Spanish national team before moving to the NBA. But even though Ricky could never be called a bust, never looked anything close to a superstar in the NBA, never averaging more than 13 points per game. And the third biggest concern about Luka came down to his body. Even though Doncic was a big guard, he was not going to beat a lot of people in a foot race, and will not ever participate in a dunk contest with his mediocre vertical jump. Though NBA GMs and analysts might have forgotten that Larry Bird wasn't exactly athletic, and that Magic Johnson had poor lateral speed and a few-inch vertical jump, great players like Steve Nash, John Stockton, and Dirk Nowitzki couldn't jump over a puddle of water, and they are still some of the greatest to ever do it. But when you're coming from Europe, that's the kind of scrutiny you're going to be exposed to. It just comes with the territory. However, your place in the draft is not determined just by your skill and where you come from. It's also determined by the level of competition. And the 2018 draft class might have been the best class of the last decade. You have to to take DeAndre Ayton with the number one overall pick. DeAndre Ayton was a physical beast in college, a seven-footer with incredible coordination, exceptional speed in transition, and soft shooting touch. Before the draft, Ayton was projected to be the next Joel Embiid. Then there was Marvin Bagley, a left-handed big man with incredible athleticism and the graciousness of a figure skater. At Duke, Bagley was fluid, slippery, with a perfect finish in transition and around the basket. Michael Porter promised a ton of upside as a versatile 6'10 shooter who draws a billion fouls and was supposed to be the next coming of Kevin Durant. Mohamed Bamba was projected to be the greatest defender in the class, a gigantic center with a nearly 8-foot wingspan, and he looked like he could be the best blocker of all time, despite doing his best to mimic a tree on offense. Jaron Jackson Jr. was also rated extremely high as a rare combo big man who can block shots and shoot threes equally well. And let's not forget Trey Young, who led the NCAA in points in a assists was also projected to go high, and there were plenty of other quality players in this class who were now killing it in the NBA, namely Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Jalen Brunson, Michael and Miles Bridges, and Robert Williams. Another factor that also comes into play with drafting new players is roster fit and who you already have on the team. The Phoenix Suns had the first overall pick. The Phoenix Suns select DeAndre Ayton. So when they selected DeAndre Ayton, nobody was surprised. The Suns already had Devin Booker, and they wanted to pair him with a versatile big man and not another ball-dominant guard. Even in retrospect, their choice was reasonable because Ayton had the best physical attributes of any player in the draft. He fits their needs, and out of all the top prospects, he had the least chance to become a bust. The Sacramento Kings had the second pick, and this is where it got interesting. The Kings GM was Vlade Divac, a Serbian big man who knew Luka and his father personally, and someone who knew everything about European basketball. Because Divac was also a non-athletic player who became an all-star based on his basketball IQ and feel for the game, we knew that he wouldn't undermine Luka based on his physical attributes. And just when we all expected Luka to go to Sacramento, Adam Silver announced that the Kings would select Marvin Bagley. The Sacramento Kings select Marvin Bagley III. 
Divac had drafted a talented point guard, De'Aaron Fox, in 2017. And we understand that drafting two point guards in consecutive drafts is not something that's recommended in General Manager 101. After the draft, it was widely speculated that Divac drafted Bagley just because it was ordered by the team owner, Vivek Ranadive, which we'll never know for sure. Luka was finally selected with the third overall pick by the Atlanta Hawks, after which the Memphis Grizzlies selected Jaron Jackson at number four. Memphis still had Mike Conley on the roster, and they were almost exclusively looking to add a big man to the team, which made perfect sense at the time. And then, a shock. Dallas had the fifth pick, and they picked Trey Young, but the Mavs didn't get Trey for themselves. They selected him for the Hawks. Atlanta and Dallas made a trade that sent Luka to Texas and Trey to Georgia, and the Mavericks also included a first-round pick in the next year's draft. Just like the other teams in the top five, the Hawks believed that dominating the NCAA was better than being the MVP of the Euro League, and they believed that Trey is a much better shooter than Luka. After that, the Orlando Magic selected Mo Bamba, who said that the Mavericks are going to regret not selecting him over Luka. It was a quote that didn't age well, because as soon as the season started, Doncic looked like Michael Jordan, and everybody else looked like Sam Bowie. Everybody who doubted Luka soon had to eat their words. Want to see the rookie of the year? It ain't DeAndre Ayton in Phoenix, regardless of what happened. It's this kid, Luka Doncic. That's who it is. The rookie of the year to be. This kid is special. After just a few weeks of the season, it was clear that Luka is the best rookie by a wide margin. In fact, he was more ready for NBA basketball than any other rookie in this millennium, not named LeBron James. Doncic was so dominant that he reached 2,000 career points faster than anybody else. He scored 2,000 points in five fewer games than LeBron James, 10 games less than Kevin Durant and Carmelo Anthony, and even 75 games faster than Kobe Bryant. All four teams that could have drafted Luka made a mistake. Even though Trey Young has a similar skill set as Luka, he's two sizes smaller and can't exploit the defense with his physicality as Luka can. Aiton has turned into a solid third option on the Suns, but he'll likely never become a superstar, and the same can be said about Jaron Jackson. But the team that is messed up the most is the Sacramento Kings. Marvin Bagley is not even on their team anymore, and neither is the GM who drafted him. Even though Divac defended his pick and said Bagley needed time, those were just empty words, and Vlade would have given anything to have some of that Luka magic. If anything, he'd still have his job.